Hey guys, welcome to the 12th video in this Flame game development series where we are making Ski Master, a top down vertical scroller about skiing. In the previous video, we added the concept of player life and we also added the logic to display the game over menu when the player runs out of lives. So, in this video, we'll make the game more juicy by adding some simple particle effects and a camera shake effect. And as usual, I've already updated the Flame packages in the EPUB spec file. Make sure that you are using these exact same versions. Ok, so let's get started with implementing the camera shake effect. My plan is to make the camera shake when the player goes off trail. I think this will be a nice way to visually indicate the player that going off trail is not good. Making the camera shake is as simple as making it move by small distances around its target position for some amount of time. In flame, this technically means we need to move the viewfinder of the camera. And since viewfinder is a component, we can essentially add a move effect to the viewfinder to achieve the desired shake effect. So far, we have used the effects API multiple times, but we have been creating new instances of effect every time we needed to add one. This approach worked fine so far, but in this particular case, we don't know how long the camera shake should last beforehand. Because the duration between the player going off trail and then coming back in will vary every time. To account for that, we can keep a single effect instance added to the viewfinder at all times and just start and stop it when the player goes off trail and comes back in. So let's implement that now. First, I'll create a new late final member of type move effect in the gameplay class. I'll name this as camera shake. I'll set up the move effect to move by 3 units along the Y axis and for the controller, I'll use an infinite effect controller wrapping a zigzag effect controller. This will make sure that the effect moves in positive as well as negative Y direction. Then next, in the onload method, let's add this effect to the viewfinder of the camera. Now just to make sure that the effect is working, let's run the game. And as you can see, the camera does shake along the Y direction as I expected. Now let's make sure this effect gets activated only when the player is off trail. For that, in the onload method, I'll first pause the effect as soon as it is added. Then next, in the update method, when is off trail is true, we'll have to resume the camera shake effect. And to avoid making any unnecessary calls, I'll first check the value of camera shake dot is paused before calling resume. Then exactly opposite to this, in the else block where is off trail is false, I'll make the effect pause if it is not paused already. Now let's run the game and see this in action. And as you can see, now the camera starts shaking only when the player is off trail. Ok, so I'm happy with this effect for now. But if you want to make the shake effect look random and a bit more natural, you can take a look at the Perlin noise effect controller from the flame noise package. That controller internally generates a Perlin noise to produce the values, making the randomness more smooth and natural. But anyways, let's get back to the task at hand. Next, I want to render a snow trail behind the player character as it moves. And to achieve that, we'll be using the Particle Systems API from Flame. And if you want to get an idea of what can be achieved using these APIs, you can take a look at the live examples for particles on Flame's website. So back in the code, let's go to the player class. Here, to spawn the trail particles behind the player, we'll have to use a Particle System component. Since we want to keep on spawning these particles continuously as the player moves, We'll create and add a new particle system component on every frame in the update method. And notice that I'm adding the particle system to the parent component of player instead of the player itself. If I add it directly to the player, the particles will keep on moving with the player, something that we don't want. Adding it to the parent makes sure that the particles stay attached to the parent component and get left behind as the player moves. Next, for the particle system component to work, we'll need to provide a particle. There are a lot of pre-built particles offered by Flame out of the box. 
but I'll start with a simple circle particle and slowly build upon it to create more complex effect. So to control the color of this particle, we can use its paint parameter. And to avoid creating a new paint object on every frame, I'll create a single paint object called trail particle paint and store it as a late final member of this class. For the color, I'll use the background color of the game. And now this common paint object can be used for all the particles. Next, I'll set the radius of this particle to 2. We might need to tweak it later, but for now, 2 is fine. Next, let's set the position of the particle system as the player's current position. And finally, let's set the lifespan of the circle particle to 1 second. This parameter controls how long the particle should stay active before getting removed from the particle system. Now, let's run the game and see how this looks. And as you can see, we are now getting a nice trail behind the player. But it seems that the particles are getting rendered on top of the player sprite. We can easily fix that by increasing the priority value of the player component. For that, I'll first expose the super.priority parameter from the player constructor. Then in the handle spawn points method of the gameplay class, I'll set the priority of player to 1. And if I start the game now, you can see that the particles are getting correctly rendered behind the player. Ok, now instead of this single big trail, I want to create two smaller trails, one for each ski. Now one might think of adding two particle system components with some X offset in their position to achieve this effect. But that won't be the best use of the particle system. Because ideally, particle systems are designed to spawn multiple particles at once. So here, to generate multiple particles, I'll replace the circle particle with the particle.generate method. This allows us to specify the count as well as the generator function for the particles. In the generator function, we get the index of the particle as input and it expects us to return a particle. So for example, the original circle particle can be returned from here. Doing that would mean on each frame, two circle particles will be generated instead of one. But both of them will be placed at the same location. And if you check, you'll notice that the circle particle does not have any position input. So to place the individual particles at some offset from the position of the particle system component, we'll have to use a translated particle. This particle essentially just wraps another particle and places it at the given offset. So for the child, let's use the original circle particle with a smaller radius. Next, to place both the circle particles at some positive and negative x offset, I'll create two late final member of type vector2 called offset left and offset right. I'll use one fourth of width of the body as the offset with left being negative and right being positive. Then in the translated particle, I'll use left offset if index is 0 and right offset if it is not. This should place both the particles at equal horizontal offset around the player. Now let's check this in the game. And as you can see, we are now getting two trails behind the player. The trail length seems too small though. So let's fix that. To increase the trail, we can simply increase the lifespan of the particle from 1 to 2 seconds. Also, since we are using the same value of lifespan for both the particles, we can remove it from here and directly set in the particle.generate method. And now, if I go back to the game, you'll notice that the trail particle stays alive for longer, making the trail length bigger. Okay, this looks fine visually, but there is a minor issue that we need to fix. If I start level 3 and try to jump off of a ramp, you'll notice that the trail particles are rendered even when the player is in air. Now, the physical concept of ground and air is not much valid here since this is a 2D top-down game. But to fix this issue, we can introduce a boolean member in player class called is on ground with its initial value as true. Then next, in the jump method, I'll set is on ground to false at the beginning and in the on complete of the jump scale effect, I'll reset it back to true. This means while the player character is in jump state, 
is on ground will be false. Then finally, in the update method, we can check the value of is on ground before adding the trail particles. Now let's run the game and see if that works. And yeah, now it looks perfect. Okay, so next, I'm thinking of adding some particle effects when the player hits a snowman. Right now, we do have a fade out effect for the snowman, but I think with some particles, it will look more cool. So for that, let's go to the snowman class. Here, we already have the collect method where the fade out effect is handled. So following the same steps as the player class, I'll add a particle system component to the parent component of snowman here. For the particle parameter, I'll use particle.generate method and from the generator method, I'll return a moving particle. This particle is sort of similar to the translated particle with the only difference being that it makes the child particle gradually move towards a given point throughout its lifespan. And I'm using this because I want the particles to move radially outwards from the snowman. Then next, for the child parameter, I'll again use a circle particle. And similar to the one we added in the player class, I'll create a late final paint object for this as well with its color parameter same as the background color of the game. For accessing the game getter, we'll need to add the has game reference mix into this class. And now we can use this paint in the circle particle. Next, I want each of the circle particles to have different sizes. But first, let's check how this looks in its current state. So for now, I'll set the radius to 2 the two parameter of moving particle to a random vector and the position of particle system component to the position of the snowman. Now let's run the game and try to hit some snowman. Ok, so it is quite hard to see but some particles are getting emitted when a snowman is collected. This must be happening because of the random vector that we used. If you check the documentation for vector2.random, you'll see that the returned vector is always within 0, 0,0 and 1, 1. This means the largest magnitude of vector2.random can only be 1, which is too small. So I'll just scale this random vector by 12 and start the game again. Ok, and now you can see that the particles are traveling a larger distance. And if you notice carefully, you'll also see that all the particles only move along the positive x and y direction. And that is again because of the random vector. We'll have to tweak it a bit to make it generate random vectors along all the directions. So to achieve that, I'll first create a static final instance of type random in this class. Next, let's create a static method called random vector. Return type for this method will be vector2 and it will take a double parameter as input called scale. We'll use this to return a scaled random vector. So from this method, I'll simply return a new instance of vector2. And to make each of its component range randomly from minus 1 to 1, I'll use random.next double by multiplying it by 2 and subtracting 1 from it. Basically, next double returns a random value within 0 to 1 range. And here, I'm just remapping it between minus 1 to 1. Then, I'll normalize and scale this vector with the given scale. Now, back in the moving particle, we can replace this and use our random vector method with a scale of 12. And while we are at it, I'll also randomize the radius of circle particle by adding a random value between 0 and 3 to the current radius. This means the minimum and maximum values of radii for all the particles will be 2 and 5 respectively. Now let's save this and test it in the game. Ok, and you can see that now the particles are traveling in all directions and their sizes are also different each time. Now although this is working fine, I think it will look much better if we make this particle scale to zero as they move outwards. So to do that, I'll wrap the circle particle inside a scaling particle with the target scale as zero. Also, by default, the particle.generate method creates only 10 particles. 
which I think is very less for our use case. So let's set the count parameter of generate to 30. Now let's run the game and see this in action. And yep, as you can see, now there are more particles and they are gradually scaling to zero. Now as a final change, I think I'll also set the lifespan of particles to one second and I'll also increase the scale of random vector from 12 to 16. Now let's test this in the game. Okay, now this looks much better to me. The particles now stay alive for a bit longer and travel a bit more distance before getting removed. So yeah, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a thing or two about the particle systems. You can keep building on these concepts and create more complex particle systems for your games. But before you do that, make sure to hit that like button, consider subscribing to show your support and I'll see you in the next one.